So welcome to Northeast Thailand and where I am based we have a rainy season that lasts somewhere between three and six months per year. So that means that uh, potentially you've got nine months without any rain and if you want to grow stuff here you need to provide water. So one of the ways I do that is using a solar powered drip irrigation system. So I'm just going to share a little bit about the system that I use and the components that I use. So it all starts with this pipe. This is, if you like, the, uh, the ring main for moving the water around the garden and it's a high density polyethylene pipe. And um, before you buy the pipe, it's a good idea to make sure that you have the components that go with it, which are of the same size. It's no good buying a 30 mil pipe and then finding you can't buy the 30 mil components. So what sort of components would we use to go with this pipe? Uh, well, the obvious one to start with is a, is a joiner pipe. Um, so we can join two pieces of pipe together and you might want to use a Jubilee clip as well. Um, but um, if you hunt around, you'll find uh, a good fit, a good match uh, for the connectors to the pipe. Sometimes you might need to use some hot water to soften the pipe up. Uh, but I tend to find that in most cases, I don't need the Jubilee clip. Um, some corner units. These are quite good. Um, and obviously some taps as well. So that allows you to switch on and switch off different uh, zones, if you like. Um, and uh, these these corner pieces, well, no, corner piece is actually a joiner, so you can you can have a branch going off. Um, and at the end, you want something like this. So basically, you uh, put a bend in the pipe, and this holds the pipe in the bent position and stops any water coming out. So that's, as I say, is the, is the main way of moving water around the garden. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the solar system in a minute, uh, but obviously um, we need the blue pipes. This is the main type of pipe work which is used here in Thailand um, for, for water. So you'll need to be able to interface uh, the blue pipes to, to this, this black pipe as well, the PE pipe. Now, um, we're now in the third year of our rainwater harvesting system and initially we just laid the pipe on the ground around where the plants were. Unfortunately you end up with a build-up of mulch and, uh, and the pipe disappears and uh, it ends up getting chopped up when you're trying to do some weeding. So what we've decided to do this year is to raise the pipe up and um, I'd highly recommend uh, sticks like this we've we tried using wooden sticks and here in the tropics uh, wood unless it's a very hard wood which is obviously very expensive uh, you wouldn't want to use that for a stake these types of stick are plastic coated steel so they're quite strong um, and they don't rust and nothing's going to eat it so that's the main uh, way of moving the water around the garden but to get the water to the plants we need uh, some different components. And initially I started with, with this sort of thing. So it, it uh, either plugs in, it has a little spike on it, either plugs directly in into the pipe, um, like, like, like this one does. Um, but you can see that this was actually red initially and uh, and the sun has basically bleached it and uh, and you can see it's all cracked now. Um, so it's obviously not uh, UV resistant and uh, it's it's not going to work at all here. Uh, so we then moved on to something a bit more robust like, like these green ones. Um, uh, the problem with these is that uh, the only thing that's holding the thing together is the plastic thread and the pressure can build up on, on, a, on a solar well pump and you end up with this, this coming apart. And then this little piece of uh, 
plastic inside which controls the flow you can see there's I don't know if you can see there's a hole in there um, that ends up disappearing <laughs> and the thing is basically useless and to be honest these didn't really work out very well they were very difficult you're supposed to tighten it down to control the flow what we found worked was these sort of taps and the taps are very robust they they last a long time and um, it's very easy to sort of make micro changes to the amount of water coming out um, and as you can see we have uh, this this pipe here we use this pipe uh, so that we don't, haven't got to get the big pipe absolutely everywhere we need it we just sort of run that round the garden and then we branch off using the smaller pipe work there is a whole variety of different attachments uh, for the pipe uh, but I always feel it's important to have one of these types of taps somewhere in the system so that you can control the amount of water in in any location I, I particularly like uh, this type of connector and you can see that it's barbed on both sides here so it makes a nice good solid fit into into the pipe and uh, and, into, and into this smaller pipe here uh, we made a mistake when we initially bought these green ones uh, they're barbed on one side and to uh, smooth on the other and uh, that meant that it wasn't any pressure at all on the on the pipe there it would just pop off so you need to make sure that you get them barbed on both sides <clears throat> another thing that's quite useful are these plugs uh, because what can happen is you make a hole in the pipework for something and uh, it end up getting over oversized or something you end up with a leak so the best thing to do uh, is put one of these plugs in and that will seal it and that you can see that the, these are quite a bit bigger um, that if you compare the size um, these these plugs are much better at actually filling the hole obviously if it's uh, if it's a very bad break then you just need to you need to cut it and and uh, cut out the damage section so other tools that I use are, there are a number of tools that you can use to make the holes for these attachments, but I personally find this one is the best. It's a manual thing. Obviously you don't want to go straight through because you'll end up coming out the other side. So I tend to come in at an angle uh, and uh, I've got to the stage now where I can make the hole perfect, uh, but substantial gloves are recommended. Otherwise you end up cutting your hands to shreds. Um, if you want to pull the things out afterwards, something like this that's not going to damage, you can get in behind it and uh, you, can, you can make adjustments. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a tour around the garden and uh, we're going to look at this in action. Okay, so we're just going to have a tour around. Uh, so you can see that what we've done with the pipe work is that we have zip tied it uh, to the barbed wire fence. Uh, you can see uh, an end piece in operation here. There's no water coming out because of the bend. Uh, we have uh, a joiner piece here and then the stick. And we can adjust the flow by just turning. Maybe I can get some help here. Okay, so it's supposed to be called a drip irrigation system, but you end up sort of having to tweak it a little bit. Uh, can we see what, uh, have a commentary as to what plants we've got growing as well? This one is Don Some sort of palm tree, yes. Something like that, and this one is uh, hardwood, a uh, mahogany tree. Mahogany tree. So we have a combination of fruit trees, but we also have trees just for shade. This is a flower. flower. Another palm, and uh, this is uh, farang. <laughs> farang. Yeah, we call farang. Yeah. Okay. It's a big mahogany one. Another mahogany, and what? And what are these ones? Papaya. Papaya. And jackfruit. And jackfruit. So, what? it's a fruit tree. It's a fruit tree. Uh huh. Another mahogany. Yeah, that one is mango. Mango tree. We have lots of mangoes. Yep. Uh, obviously that one will need a 
a bit of tweaking. I see there's a lot of water coming off that one. <laughs> it's okay, we'll do that later. Uh, and here we are into the into the teak trees. Uh, this garden was originally a, 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 a teak field. Yeah. And and this one is uh, this fig. fig tree. Okay, so that's actually I ended up sort of chopping this, and we thought we'd lost it, but it's uh, it obviously appreciated being pruned because it's really shot up. So here we are now at uh, the first of our solar well pumps. Um, this is the last one I've put in. <coughs> As you see, it's got three panels, so it's quite substantial. These are about 350 watt panels, uh, and it's a 750 watt uh, solar well pump that goes down to 50 meters. It's a five inch bore. So in Thailand, they mix imperial and metric. So five inch pipe going down, uh, and it goes down to 50 meters. And you can see here that I have got uh, pipe work coming off and um, and obviously as I said you need to be able to have the connections uh, to be able to to connect to the blue pipe work to this black PE pipe so this is a very powerful uh, pump and uh, so we quite like these um, concrete um, I think they're for drains really, but uh, they're quite cheap and it allows us to have effectively raised beds. Another fruit tree. Right, this, this is um, something that we've added about a year ago. Um, so we bought a strip of land to join the, the main piece of land that we built the house on to another piece of land on which we wanted to put the pond. So we had to buy a strip of land and it's what, about eight meters wide. Um, and so we've decided to try and use the space by building some framework. And what, what have we got growing here? Um, that one's cucumber. That is when they're climbing up there, right. shade. Okay, so this is the start of the season for that. And what's this one? Um, it's a dragon fruit. Dragon fruit. Yeah. Okay. So I think we'll just do it with this side and then we we'll come back. More cucumber. That one is mangkut. It's a fruit tree. So okay. Yeah. Great. And you can see that at the end of the rainy season, we did a lot of clearing out. Um, so we cut everything back um, and then we're able to, to start adding some, some fresh compost and uh, pot, a potting mix to the two, yeah. the plants to give them a good start. That one is a long bean. Long, long bean. Yeah, yeah, long bean. And this one is passion fruit. Yeah, so this passion fruit, uh, what's the story with this? We, didn't we just find it growing naturally in the garden? Yeah, well, that one we bought. Oh, that from, one we bought. From top. Okay. It's a very small size. So it came in a little a little pot. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and how old is it now? Two years, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. And and we can see we actually have some passion fruit. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's towards the end of the season now, isn't yeah, it? Okay. Oh, some more on this side, yeah. 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 So these are excellent. We, uh, what we tend to do with those, because we end up with a lot of them, is we put them into um, ice trays in the freezer, and then we can put them into smoothies. Okay, and, uh, and here we have the uh, lime trees. We have a few lime trees here. Uh, obviously, they just started off as just basic little twigs a couple of years ago. Another palm. Oh, that's a coconut tree. Yeah. Okay, coconut tree. Another lime tree. Mango. Mango. Lime tree. Another coconut. Another lime tree. And uh, a teak tree. Oh, it's mahogany. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, that's right. A couple more lime trees. 
and we now come to is this switched on i think it needs switching on this one so we can see it in operation it's on already is it okay so this was the original uh system that we had uh and this is a it's a much smaller solar system uh there's two panels uh 350 watt pump compared to the 750 watt pump we had on the other one and it only goes down to 30 meters uh, just a bit worried about the water situation because we had a big drought in the second year we were here um, and the government water basically gave up so anyway this one does this part of the garden and uh, what have we got growing along here vegetable. some vegetables Vegetable tree. Ah. Uh, and like right. So you see, you have to do, keep a monitor on these things. Yeah. Might want to switch that one off. It needs fixing. It's so the pipe just basically popped off due to the pressure. At the um, the end of the rainy season, there's an awful lot of water, and we end up with a lot of pressure. Uh, and there's another one. So so a bit of uh, a bit of work required. You see. Uh, it's probably what's happened is this is one of the um, one of the green uh, taps that doesn't have the barbs on both sides. Okay, so we're now at the pond, and the pond is uh, eight metre deep pond, and we uh, we have a fish farm here, and I might as well show this now. So this pond, uh, we dug this pond when we built the house three years ago, and. Uh, it's all been filled with rainwater so uh, plants really prefer rainwater to well water that's been our experience there's obviously more nitrogen in the, in the rainwater and so we have this uh, submersible pump that uh, basically lives in the pond and uh, that's the best water we can give give to the plants uh, because uh, it is rainwater and uh, basically shit from the fish uh, so it is nutritionally very dense and uh, the plants love it but it's a lot of work to watering all the plants so we have the drip irrigation as uh, as a backup so these are a number of uh, have a number of the same you're saying it's a vegetable plant I thought it was a fruit tree Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And what's this one? Papaya. I thought that was a papaya. It looked like a papaya. Okay. Right. Here we're into a bunch of banana trees. The banana trees are planted around the pond uh, to uh, to hold the bank. And we have the. Uh, the solar aerator, I do love my solar panels, so this helps to aerate the water uh, for the fish because the uh, you, you need to oxygenate the water. Uh, and here's another one, we need, to, so we need to sort that one out in a minute. More bananas. That's another coconut, isn't it? And what, what, what are these here? It's all mangoes. All mangoes. The, the different types. Different types of mango trees. The Thais do love their mangoes. Yeah, you And uh, originally we planted some grass for the, for the cows, but we've moved that to some new land now, so we can concentrate on growing fruit trees here. What's this one? Another mango. All right, and that's Rambo, <laughs> our, our Labrador. Uh, nice comfy place here to, to sit and uh, watch the pond. Lovely spot. Lovely spot, yes. So ideally in a drip irrigation system, you just switch it on and leave it. Um, 
but you obviously need to um, need to, to regulate the amount of water that the plants are getting. Um, and we've got some lemongrass here. And uh, so, so what are these? These are a Thai herb or something, aren't they? Thai vegetable is a chaom. Chaom, yeah. Mm. And what is this? Some mangoes? Yeah, the big mango. Big mango tree. Already getting fruit off that one. Yeah. Uh, so these are some vegetable beds, and we had uh, some green netting. You can probably see just some bits of the green netting left, mm -hmm. but uh, we're planning to do the same as we did with. Um, with the little road that we have is we're going to put more steel across the top to make it a more rigid structure. And the mango there. Uh, there's a watering by the dog. What's this? Um, it's Flower, yeah. Nice to have some flowers for the butterflies. That's how you see we have some butterflies. So just before we go down, I just want to talk about the soil. Uh, because this this is the natural soil. It's just dirt. Um, and not much will grow in it. So we've worked really hard to try and supplement the soil and it's, uh, we do that by amendments. Uh, we don't put any chemicals or anything. It's, it's all organic, so you see, uh, we do a chop and drop. Uh, so we cut, cut down some grass, etc., and we put that around the plants. We use cow manure. We use uh, burnt rice husks, that's the black so uh, the rice husks are a byproduct of rice farming and they're used in a uh, bioelectric plant so they're burnt to produce electricity and the the burnt rice husks are a byproduct of that process so it's a um but they're great for the garden there's a lot of carbon and uh different type here you see we actually have a spray type more difficult to control uh but uh, that's why there's always at least a uh, green tap in the process as well. So we're back now to this uh, framework. And uh, so you can good see here of the, uh, the passion fruit. That's, that's what most of the growth is passion fruit but uh, it does provide a nice shady walk. So one of the problems with a uh, solar well pump is it's uh, it's either on or it's off it's uh, not very easy to regulate um, so you have to to do that regulation with the taps at the plants and uh, we're in the early stages now of uh, setting the system up again I mean every year we, after the rainy season it's sat there for possibly six months and uh, we need to go around and do some fine-tuning so we have a vegetable bed over near the pond. You see where those uh, steel uh, bars were, the steel posts, that's a vegetable bed. And we have another one here. Uh, and this is uh, lots of tomatoes in here. Pumpkin. Uh, and pumpkins. And what else have we got? Uh, I think no Thailand. Mushroom, 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 mushroom. All right. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to expand this again. We love these um, concrete pipes because uh, they're open at the bottom. Yeah. Um, and uh, we just add 
the supplements in. You can see here's, here's one that hasn't got anything in it yet. Um, so uh, it's just very easy to, 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 to grow stuff in, in the raised beds. Yeah. And you can see that we're just starting now. We do this every year. We have uh, cow manure and uh, we have the burnt, the burnt rice husks over there, which I'll show you in a second. And this is uh, coconut husks. So this is, this is great stuff. Uh, and I've got my three bin composting system, which gets a bit taken over during the rainy season. So that all needs cutting back. Um, and this is all the preparation is every year. What I do is I build a great big container for my potting mix. And this will all be filled with uh, the burnt rice husks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rambo, for sir. Mixing. <laughs> Mixing it all together. <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, this will be burnt rice husks. This will be cow manure. This will be coconut uh, husks. Uh, maybe we, we have uh, uh, a chipper as well. So we put some, put some wood chips in that as well. So this will all be filled and all go onto the garden. And uh, these straw bales, we run those, how many a year do we normally buy of those? About 300 bales yeah. a year. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they'll rot down in a year. By the end of the rainy season, they're just, they're just gone. Um, and uh, it's really worth looking to see what the soil looks like when you've actually uh, got some amendments on it. If you remember, we looked at the dry dirt. I forgot to... Uh, to show you just go back to have a little look in this section here it's very obvious what the soil looks like by comparison because there's a lot of activity going on in this zone here um, so the ties would call this din dam black black soil and it's it's just that's all rotted down organic material and that's what we want to do in the garden we want to be able to create our own soil not use any chemicals and uh, and just end up with a productive garden <laughs>